So, character editing. So, this is contained in a different script called edit behavior. Um, and how it works, uh, for example, here in the process function, we need first block the, the position of the mouse. I mean, uh, if the mouse is over this box, you can grab it or do it, whatever. But we don't want it to interfere when we click here. Um, what, we, what do we do? Uh, we call the mouse target function. The mouse target function works in this way. We need to start two strings with the previous shape or the current shape. Um, the mouse position is going to be our current position of the mouse in the canvas. So what we need? We need a result that we get from this function that is raycast from mouse. And what we need? A raycast. For example, we have a camera here. We need this point that is going to be the origin of the camera. An array n that is going to project an uh, array to the canvas from the camera but in the position of our mouse. So it's going to project this ray from the origin to the mouse position. The thing is that if we have one shape here, this ray is going to collide here. And that's the result we want, the name of the collider. So if there's a result and it's not grabbing, this means that you can be grabbing, your mouse would be here and you wouldn't get any info, but you are still needing this shape. So the thing is, if, if we're not grabbing and there's a result, uh, just get this current shape. Get this name and set it. Get the current part, which is going to be the bone, the, the parent bone, which is here. So, for example, you're colliding with this, you need this name and this name of the bone. Um, Alright, you are setting this part, this current part, this current shape, and obviously you can grab. So, can grab is, is set to true. If not, you can grab, and if it's not grabbing anything, you can set this shape to null. We'll see it later. So if the previous shape is different to the current shape, we call this highlight function. This highlight function works by material, so we need this uh, highlight to know what are we grabbing at this moment. So this works by any single part in a different way. So we have, we have just suppose that this is a torso part and you are colliding with that. So in the, in the highlight function, uh, we need a mask with the current shape, which is the name of this collider and is contained here in the ID masks. Um, and we need a black mask because we don't need to highlight anything sometimes. So for example here, um, if the current shape is null, it's not colliding with anything, it's not grabbing anything, uh, we set all the materials to not highlight anything, to set it to, set it to black. And else, if you, for example, are grabbing spine 1, spine 2, spine 3 shapes, uh, these are related to the torso, so we want to highlight this material and set this material to black. So it's what we do in here. Same with the, with the arms, with the, with the legs or whatever. Then what happens with the input event? This is when everything happens. Uh, if, if we are clicking, we are colliding and you can grab because you are not grabbing already and you are colliding with something. You said it's grabbing to true. This goes later for the process function. Um, we store this value that is the position of the click. So you clicked here, all right? This is the grab pause value. And so we go to the process function. And if it's grabbing, already it's grabbing. So it's, it's colliding, it's not, it wasn't grabbing. Uh, and right now it's grabbing. So now we can call the grab function. Grab function has these uh, variables, which are delta. 
Delta means you clicked here, but your mouse, mouse position right now is here. So, grab delta is this vector. And we'll store the distance between one point or another. So you get the viewport, your mouse position, minus the grab position when you clicked. So we extract these mouse X and mouse Y values. And then it's when everything works. If you already have a current part, it's not null, it's colliding, it's attached head, for example, you are going to grab the head shapes. This works differently because uh, the head shapes uh, are managed by blend shapes and the bones are contained in the, in the body. So, for example, if we want to grab bones, we are passing by these values, mouse X and Y. And, and yeah, this is how, how it works, uh, grab bones. We need a scale, we need to find this bone, which is the current shape bone. It's, it's for this because uh, you need to, to keep always the same names. So you are getting, for example, this upper arm R, so the main rig will find the bone in the skeleton. We call this function here, find bone, um, upper arm, for example. Um, there you have it, it's this bone. So we set a transform, a second transform. Um, if the current shape is spine 1 or spine 2, I mean this one or this one, we set a scale limit. So if you change it to 1, for example, you have this limit, <laughs> you know? So you can tweak. <coughs> How much, uh, how much do you want your character to be, to be changed, um, where it was, so yeah, you, you can tweak these values whenever you want. So here we set the limit, and if it's inside this limit, uh, we translate the bone. We're not scaling the bones, because if we scale this bone, everything is going to be scaled and it's going to be a mess. But at this moment, we only need the Y position to move the Y position of the, the bone, which is going to be here and works like a scaling in, in the Y direction. And yeah, we take that bone, set bone custom pose. You get this bone and you apply this transform. It's quite simple. If it's spine 3, for example, if it's spine 3, it's different because we are doing that in, in two directions, as you can see. We are grabbing the shoulder bones to the right and the spine three bone up or down. So if the current shape is spine three, we set the scale limit. Of course, you can change it. Let's see what happens. So if the scale amount is inside the limit, we get this translation and translate it. We're in the X axis of the mouse. in this axis. So we set the custom pose of the solder left and right with this transform. It's, it's local, so uh, the x-axis is going to be moved in the local y position of each bone. I mean, we have this bone we are scaling this, scaling, we are moving this up. But if the bones of the soldiers are like here, it's moving in that direction either way. So it's still being exactly the same. And the same with the spine, where we are moving this with the Y axis and this with the X axis. Well, we'll do the same with the with the rest of the bones. Okay, uh, let's. Well, this is quite easy. It's just for adjusting the the zoom because the character is going to be uh, taller or smaller depending on depending on, on these settings. So we need to adjust the translation of the camera for pointing the head when you are zooming out or you're logging.